this is Debbie from Lime Digital Design and thank you for joining me for Doodling with Debbie. I do love keeping things simple. Two kitties stamped together and then watercoloured. A little colour around them to set the scene and done. I also love this sentiment which I cut apart from a longer version on the stamp set. I think all we need at this time is to pause or pause as in kitty pause at the moment. My card uses the Meow This Day stamp set from Sound Says Stamp and as you can see is intended for all the cat lovers out there. I like that there are different positions for the kitties but the, the two that grabbed me the most and fitted with my style were the two cats with their backs to us. Although I didn't use them there are matching dies to this stamp set too. I wanted to stamp one kitty slightly in front of the other and to do this I needed to create a mass for the foremost cat. I stamped the larger of the two cats in Versifying Claire Nocturne ink on Samsa stamp masking paper and trimmed out. When cutting out a mask to get the best impression later on, you need to cut right up to or even on the black line. The mask creates a slightly different level on the card which when the next image is stamped over the top, you don't want there to be a gap where the images meet. Cutting as carefully and closely as possible means that when they are stamped, the two images meet perfectly and it appears as if the smaller cat is slightly further away and being overseen or protected by the larger cat behind. I used a grid transparency to outline the cat on watercolour card. I used Fabriano Artistico Extra White Cold Pressed for this card. Also the transparency will protect the card from getting smudges on it because I'd already got the stamp inky when creating the mask. I used Versifying Claire Nocturne ink because when dry this is permanent and waterproof and so won't smudge as I paint. I covered the stamp image with a mask I'd created and then aligned the smaller cat. I used the transparency again just to make sure I was getting the image placed on straight. Again I stamped in Nocturne ink and once the second cat was stamped I could lift the mask to reveal the two cats sitting together. I used Daniel Smith paints and a round synthetic brush. My plan was for the larger cat to be a ginger tom and then the smaller cat to be a stripy silver grey. I laid a light layer of colour over the whole of the ginger tom and then brought in a more concentrated mix. Working in the wet and wet method where the darker colour disperses into the light layer giving lovely blooms of colour. It is shadows and highlights which bring a colouring to life and so having added the deeper colour for the shadows I needed to think about where the light was going to come from. I knew I wanted to play around with shadows around the bottom and tail of the cat and so that left the right side of the back to catch the light. Using a slightly damp brush I pulled up some of the colour from the back of the cat to maintain that as a lighter area. I added more colour to the shadows and this for me is the hardest part, leaving the watercolour alone to do its thing. You always get the best results that way, but equally it's so tempting to stick your brush in there and mess around. I repeated the same process for the small kitty, but this time in smoky grey hues. I thought that when I painted the ginger tom, I had only painted up to but not over the black line, and therefore the first cat was a separate area to the second. However, when I painted the grey cat, there was some meeting of the two colours and because the coat of the ginger tom was still wet, then naturally there was some bleeding of colour from one to the other. However, I really don't mind that. In fact, I quite like it. A happy accident, if you will. It's as if the grey cat is casting a grey shadow onto the ginger tom where they meet. I must admit I struggled with the markings of the cats. I do what I always do in this situation and turn to Google Images for reference. Using the images as a guide, I painted a striped tail and markings spreading across the back from the cat's spine. I follow Christina Werner Hansen on Instagram and her two kitties. The exact breed escapes me, but I love their darker grey markings over a silver body. My markings leave a lot to be desired and I do go back in later and fiddle more, but for now I wanted to get a ground down to stop the cats from floating in midair. I added a concentrated green just beneath the cat's bottoms and then drew that colour out and down with a larger damp brush. I think that was a size 10 round synthetic brush. I kept adding deeper, darker colours to the wet surface and letting it blend outwards and then with a larger brush I kept the edges washed out. 
As I mentioned, I wasn't totally happy with the markings on the cat, and so I went back in with a damp brush and pushed the colour around a bit and lifted some of the colour up. I felt it all got a bit samey on the value front. The highlights had been lost and everything was in the mid-value. I went back into the ground with deeper colours reflecting the cats and then started working on the sky. I mixed a pale dusky blue and washed that around the cats. I wasn't trying to be too careful about the colour around the cats, I wanted loose representations. While the paint on the ground and sky was still wet, I splattered on Perfect Pearls powder and white gouache. Because the paint is still wet, the splatters move and expand in the paint to give an interesting effect. I emphasised the effect by adding darker blue to the areas in the sky with white highlights, and the two contrast nicely off one another. I added a touch of paint to the cat's collars. I didn't want this to be too gender specific, so rather than choose pink and blue, I went with a red for the ginger tom and a purple to go well with a silver coat of the grey cat. I used some of the white gouache to add touches of light to the cat's coats. I placed the white close to the darker markings so that there was more contrast and emphasised the markings without having to deepen their colour. With the background now dry, I added final splatters, which on a dry surface form defined dots. For the sentiment, I chose the let's put life on pause and have a cuddle greeting. I decided to use the first part of the phrase as I felt it was perfect for the moment we're in and also made the card more general and usable for multiple occasions. I know it can be scary cutting apart a stamp, but use a sharp pair of scissors and take a deep breath. If you fold the stamp back on itself slightly, it opens up the gap in which to cut. I treated a piece of black card with anti-static powder. This is the powder from inside one of those anti-static tools you can buy, but the brush wore away and yet there was plenty of powder left, and so I kept the powder in a small jar and used a range of Perfect Pearls brush to apply it. I stamped the greeting with clear embossing ink and then sprinkled with white embossing powder before heat setting. I then used a cutting mat, clear ruler marked with a grid and with a metal edge and a craft knife to trim out the greeting. I used a Tim Holtz guillotine to cut the watercolour card to be slightly smaller than an A2 card base. For the base I used Nina Desert Storm card and cut and scored it to size. I like to use the £100 weight so that the card base is nice and sturdy. I added the panel with my favourite 3M foam tape to the card base and then used a piece of the same tape to add the sentiment strip. I guesstimated its placement first but then checked with a T-square ruler to ensure I had it on straight. I then used Nuva droplets in Sea Breeze and Duck Egg Blue to accent around the cats. One tip when you have added these dots is to flick the card gently on the back of the card. This helps to level out the dots into nice round dome shapes rather than having pointy tips. I added a few eggshell pearls held in place with the Gina K Connect glue to finish this simple watercoloured scene. On the Simon Says Stamp blog you'll find a coordinating blog post as well as details of the supplies I've used today. If you want to find me I blog over at lambdoodesign.com. I want to thank you for joining me today and I'll see you next time.